The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 15th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off early. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every single ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside. All of the sectors, with the exception of the utilities, which just went negative by about nine pennies. Otherwise, Dow's trading up 143 points, S&P 22, NASDAQ 170, 28 for the Russell, 46 for the semis, 295 for the trannies. You've got gold that is flat. Down 60 cents. Light sweet crude is off a buck 28. Silver's up 35 pennies. Natural gas up nine cents. A 30 treasury printed out 114.11. That's down one point and two ticks. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside $26 move, nearly 2% for Mercado Libre. Targets up 19 bucks, 17% there. Monolithic power systems about 20 bucks, three and six tenths percent. Mettler Toledo up nearly 18 bucks, one and six tenths percent. And Alta Beauty up four percent, sixteen dollar move there. Eli Lilly down 18. Vertex Pharmaceuticals off 15. McKesson Corp down 14. Global E Line down 10. Duolingo off about 10 bucks as well. So we got movers and we've got shakers. But to begin the day by taking a look at the equity future contracts out here. Let's go take a look at the daily and the weekly. We'll shift our screens to the white background screens momentarily, and. As soon as we do that, then we'll see both daily along the top row, weekly along the bottom row. On a daily time frame, the next price target for the ES Mini is going to be its TD Nikau breakdown resistance level. And that's up at the 4566 area. With regard to the NQ out here, it's already trading into or it's trading into that next level. And that's up at the 159850 level. We've been up there so far that price has been rejected, but we'll see at day's end. If price is able to close above that level, that would suggest we move higher. The price is at a resistance level, and that means you and I are going to go take a look at the NQ. We're going to really take a look at what's going on under the covers in the NDX 100 for a potential top or indications that this rally is going to just simply continue. If we take a look at the Dow equity future contract, its price target, 35,357. In the case of the Russell 2000, the resistance level, let me see if I've got it on a daily basis. On a daily basis, I don't have another TD nine count breakdown area. So I'm just going to revert here to the weekly time frame. And this next level of resistance is basically where it's trading into right now, which is up at the 17, uh, I'm sorry, the 1841.90 level, 1841.90. The actual high so far has been 1838.50. Now, if price can close the week, not tomorrow, not today, but if price can close the week above 1841.90, that would then suggest to move up to 1996. Now, we'll take a look at the A to B equals CD patterns. We'll do that and take a look at it for the IWM for Hector and Patty a little bit later in the show. But if you take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, you can see prices trade above the top of its weekly profile. That is encouraging from the standpoint that price should reach that 35. 357 level coming off that daily uh, TD9 count pattern. If we take a look at the NQ, 
In the case of the NQ, uh, we've got uh, resistance on a weekly base up at 16,130. So it closed about 15,982.50 today, which suggests that 16,130 level. If it's going to do that, it likely gets back to test its swing point. That's a swing point from July 21st. And that high out, which is a TD9 count top, that high is at 16,264 and a quarter. In the case of the ES Mini, the weekly profile price is trading above that. As far as its next price target area, that just has us revert back to the daily time frame, and that's at 45.66 level. So that's what's going on with regard to the equity future contracts for their daily, for their weekly time frames out there. Now, as I mentioned, what we want to do here is really what we want to do. Well, let's go take a look at the intraday charts as long as we're on this screen here. So let's get to the intraday charts. It's got gold up there. We'll come back to gold. I'll just put in the NQ here momentarily. We just want to see what's going on with regard to... Uh, with regard to any of the intraday time periods, have they broken through any levels of support? Or where are those next levels of support? Now, the case of the NQ, you can see that yesterday's action negated a TD9 count top out there. And ordinarily, that would be enough to say, okay, we're definitely headed higher. But when we looked at the in NDX 100, the top eight weighted stocks yesterday, it said not so fast. But we'll go back and take a look at that, waiting for this to populate. So on a five-hour time frame chart, you formed a TD9 count at 9 o'clock this morning. I believe that was at 9. Let me make sure. Yeah, it was 9 a.m. So far, all that's taken place is prices pulled back to test and reject that green oscillator and change line. That number is at 15,911. As long as that remains in effect, its overall signal is neutral. If price gets below, closes below 15.911, then it will tell us that its momentum is waned and price could be targeting 15.541. The four-hour time frame chart has a road momentum indicator top. It also has a new profile. But here again, you can see that oscillator and change line is held. As long as that holds, its signal is neutralized out there. Now, if price does close below the oscillator and change line, that's at 15.923, then we could see move down to support, and that's at 15.800. So we have two levels of support right now on a move lower. That's if price can breach uh, those time frames, their oscillator and change line, 15,541 and 15,800.75. If we take a look at a two-hour time frame chart, it has a TD nine count top. It's probably also got to sell the D point up. We're not going to worry about that. Now, here we can see that price is also testing support. So along the top row, five-hour, four-hour, two-hour, we have topping patterns, and in each case, support is held. That's really important. That tells us that um, we really haven't got the signal of a turn, at least just yet. Now, in the case of the two-hour time frame chart, it is a bullish structured profile. And that would tell us on a two-hour basis, a closed blow 15.910 would signal move back to 15.822. So now we've got three downside potential price targets. You've got 15.800, 15.822, 15,541. We're not saying that price is going to get down there because all levels of support on these time frame charts have held. The same thing with the 60 minute chart. <coughs> 60 minute has roads to indicator top. 30 minute has a roads to indicator top TD9 count. You can see how price got back that 15,923 level. That's where price broke out from, and that area has basically held. On a 15 minute time frame chart, price got back its roads to indicator top. Price got back to its second breakout area out there and so far that is held and that's at the 15909 area look at it on a 10 minute basis you got a td9 count bottom right at its breakout level of support but here price has just been consolidating with inside that profile strong resistance at 15966 and support down to that td9 count bottom steve rhodes with tfn we get back to this break let's go take a look at the instruments that make up the ndx 100. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, so we're taking a look here at the top eight weighted stocks that make up the NDX 100. So even though we've got a negated topping pattern, whether we look at the NDX 100 cash index chart, whether we look at the uh, equity futures contract, whether we take a look at the QQQ ETF, we would see that all three of those negated their TD9 count tops. Now, that would suggest that we should continue to head higher out there. And that may, in fact, be the case. But like always, if we go take a look at an ETF as an example, like the Qs or an index uh, versus just an individual stock, we want to understand what's going on, especially when we are dealing with weighted uh, instruments out here or a weighted indice. We want to make sure that we understand what's going on, at least with regard to the top 10. Now, I believe the top eight stocks, somebody can, uh, even the top 10, I believe, is over just over 51% of the actual index. So the top 10 are over 50%, the other 90 it has are below that. So this makes it pretty easy for us to um, manage or understand what the indices or the ETF or the equity future contract is really signaling to us. So let's get to it. First, we're going to take a look at Apple. Apple actually completed its TD9 count top yesterday. And it's a great tool out there. And it's a great tool because either for it working or failing. Why? Because when it fails and when it fails very next day, which it may do today for Apple, that tells us about a very strong upward momentum move. So in the case of Apple, you can see here, first of all, if you actually open up the Apple chart, it loves the TD9 counts. Take a look at this how they, high that came in here on the trading day of September 1st, TD9 count. Take a look at the high that came in on the uh, October the 12th, TD9 count. Take a look at the bottom that formed out here on October 26th, a TD9 count. So you completed the TD9 count yesterday. And if Apple is able to close above that high, that high, by the way, is 180. 88.11. We're trading above it right now. It matters not what we're doing now. It matters at 4 p.m. But a close above 188.11 is then going to suggest a strong upward momentum move. Not that price can't pull back, which it can, but would tell us that price should be gutting for its TD9 count breakdown level. That's at 195.18. Now, someone in the den was asking me for upside target with regard to the NQ. When we take a look at that, upside target in the NQ, I believe it was the weekly profile that was really that next upside target. But here you could take a look at Apple because it's 11% or so of the NDX 100. And that certainly is going to give you a decent signal out there. So you want to watch Apple today. If it closes above that, it starts to weaken the idea of any kind of a, uh, any kind of a significant 
pullback or retracement. If we take a look at Microsoft, Microsoft yesterday uh, completed a TD9 count top. It was the bar following bar number nine. Now, if we take a look at its high, I'm not going to open it up, but I'll tell you its high from yesterday, and that's the key level to be watching. That high is 371.95. A close above that at any point in time negates the pattern signal. What price should do in the case of Microsoft with that top is pull back to test support. And support, or the first level of support, is going to be 364.79. That would be the top of its profile. Now, in the case of Microsoft, let's say things pull back, and they pull back pretty significantly. This was a bearish structured daily profile. So if it's only a counter trend move to the downside where price would find support or should find support would be at 358.77. It's really between 358.77 and 364.79. Whereas if price closed below 358.77, that tells us something more about the move. And then it would be targeting its next level of support. And that would be between, that would be between 339.65 and 343.72 to be exact. If we take a look at Amazon. Amazon negated its TD9 count top. I don't have any kind of a topping signal. I got a big old bearish engulfing candle today. All that that would really be doing. And so the only actual, let me make sure of this. Yeah, so the 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 only thing that we're finding is, is Amazon ran into resistance here from the high end uh, uh, September 14th. That created a three river evening star. So that's your resistance area. And that's up at the 145.86 level. Yesterday's close. 145.80. So that top is still in place out here. As far as support levels with regard to Amazon, the first would be the top of its profile, 143.37. The second one would be its oscillator and change line, and that would be at the 140.69 level. In the case of NVIDIA, NVIDIA completed a TD9 count top yesterday. Price is well above profile levels. It's well above its oscillator and change line, but the oscillator and change line that's the difference between the 19 and the 39 exponential moving average out there. That becomes its price target. That's as long as price does not close above that TD9 count high, and that's up at 498.34. So this is suggesting we could or should see a pullback. That would take us down to about the 467 level in the case of Facebook. Facebook negated its TD9 count top yesterday. That says it wants higher price out there. I don't have that price target, but it just simply says it wants higher price. If we take a look at Broadcom, if Broadcom closes the day above yesterday's high, 976.77, that will negate its TD9 count top, and that'll tell us that it too wants higher price out there. With regard to Google, Google completed a TD9 count top yesterday. Only a close above that high, which is up at 137.24 would negate that signal. Otherwise, price should pull back. Its downside price target in the case of Google should be 131 and a quarter. In the case of Tesla, it has an A to B equals C to the upside that's underway. It may be targeting its breakdown level. That's up at 265.41. However, the next bearish reversal candle would identify a sell the D point, in this case here, a Gartley sell pattern out there. So to summarize here, just take a look at the top eight instruments out there. Watch Apple's close today. Watch Microsoft's close today. Watch NVIDIA's close today. Watch Avgo's close today. Watch Google's close today. Those five instruments, five of the top eight, will give you clues as to what its intent is. Now, we may get some that are telling you they're going to break out and some that are telling you that they're going to pull back. What that would signal to me is any retracement would be relatively timid. But as retracements go, we'll take those one step at a time. Now, I've got the other top eight of the next eight weighted instruments inside the NDX 100. Let's go take a look at those. We don't have that many requests that are in, so it gives me the opportunity to be a little bit Bit more thorough, not that we're not already, but a little bit more thorough with you. Let's take a look at those next eight instruments. Let's take a look at Costco. Costco has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. I'm not figuring out its price projection. You folks can do that at home. But that would then say if we've achieved the one-to-one, -one, it doesn't look like we have. It looks like we're getting close. Uh, but, however, when I see that uh, the, the C to D leg here, I can see price as well on the left side. Now, I'm visually looking at that. It's not drawn on my chart out there. And I would say that Costco likely going to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD, but don't top there. Cisco. Cisco has uh, really been trading sideways here for a few days, so not much to say there. If we take a look at TMUS, we've got a TD9 count top with price destiny a key level of support. That key level is its bullish structured profile. A close below that, that being 145.90, which suggests lower moves, which suggests a lower move. Just a... Uh, a consolidation on the next service, Adobe. Adobe's got a TD, no, negated. The Adobe negated its TD9 count top. We can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, today, 
and I can see on this one here a bearish reversal candle in Adobe. And right now we've got a bearish engulfing candle. I don't know what it'll look like at four, but that could identify a top and suggest a pullback to 583. AMD negated its TD9 count top. That suggests higher price. No A to B equals CD pattern that I have there. Netflix negated its TD9 count top. That wants to continue moving higher. I do see an A to B equals CD pattern with regard to Netflix. So watch for the next bearish reversal candle. And then TXN likely targeting 158.27. So that's your top eight instruments inside the NDX 100. And even though the NQ, the QQQ, the NDX 100 negated TD9 count tops, you still need to keep an eye on these at least eight instruments, maybe these 16 instruments. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We get back, let's take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern for Hector and Patty, and then we'll go back and take a look at NVIDIA for John. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back up. 
right, folks, let's take a look at our first request. This is from Hector and Patty. They want to take a look at the IWM. They noticed the A to B equals CD pattern that was confirmed yesterday. We'll get back to the A to B equals CD pattern, even though I do have it drawn in here. And that one-to-one -one level, Hector and Patty, is where price is trading at about right now. That one-to-one -one price projection, 180.77. We're trading right now at about 180.96 or thereabouts, 180.82 to be exact on my other screens. Now, the upside price target here, other than the A to B equals CD pattern. So when you have an A to B equals CD pattern, First, uh, um, well, I won't do it here. Uh, I'll do it on the other screen out there. But the, an upside price target as well is 185.07. I know Brent had taken a long position inside the Russell 2000, so that should be especially helpful to him as well, that 185.77 area. We take a look at a weekly time frame chart. What I want you to notice here is price is trading above its bearish structured weekly profile. Now, it doesn't matter where it's trading on a Wednesday. It matters where that closes on Friday. If the IWM on Friday at 4 p.m. closed above 178.75, that would be a bullish signal. And that bullish signal would then suggest that 185.07, uh, uh, 184.32 or thereabouts is going to be a monthly resistance point. But if price can get above that, then we're looking at 192.90, the top of that monthly profile. So those are the signals that we're looking at inside of the IWM. The last thing that I would share with you, Hector and Patty, and everybody else who's trading the IWM, are consecutive days, the dance steps of an instrument. And here we take a look at the IWM. They all have them, typically. We can see that today is likely going to become bar number four of consecutive moves higher. The last top that we saw out here, there were five consecutive moves higher. That was on November 3rd. The prior time to that, there were five consecutive bars. That was on October the 10th. Then we had a four-bar movement out here on August the 30th. We had a five-bar movement out here on July 13th. We did get one six-bar movement. When I say six bars and movement, I'm referring to consecutive closes above the prior close out there, taking place on July 3rd. And then the last uh, five-bar move that we had out there was March. So we'll come back eight months and take a look at it. We can see that the fives out there um, of consecutive moves, that's a very doable thing. But then you expect a retracement. So this suggests that if we get a closing higher, a higher close today and a higher close tomorrow, that we are likely to get a retracement that either begins on Friday or begins on Monday because you could get to that bar number six out there. So those are the dance steps for the IWM. But let's get into the A to B equals CD pattern a little more seriously here. And we'll switch back over to our black background charts. Give me a moment. We'll get up that screen, and here you can also see the IWM. Now, the only A to B equals CD pattern is coming from the daily time frame. There's no way to really draw one in here on the weekly or on the monthly. We do have those price targets on the monthly, the top of that profile, at the 192.90 level. If we take a look at the A to B equals CD, uh, oh, we've got uh, John on the line as well from Philly. So let's, uh, as he wants to talk about the IWM, so let's incorporate this into our discussion. So, John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Steve, thank you for taking the call. I, uh, sure. out of respect for your caller, let me ask you to finish the thought you were just speaking of. Once you've done so, I've got a follow up question on the IWM and the Russell 2000 futures, if I could. Okay, absolutely. So if we take a look now at the uh, IWM, and let me just do this here. I want to get the Russell 2000 futures chart started on my other screens out there. So if you just give me a moment. So you can see the A to B equals CD pattern. Now, a couple things to notice out here. Number one, you can see the B point was passed with volume yesterday. That B point, which was the high from November 3rd, 57 million shares. Yesterday's volume, 77 million shares. That generates a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. You can see that the way that this tool draws, and this is the way I suggest that you do it as well, it maintains the exact same angle, the A to B line. The importance of that, there's a couple different important things. One is to take a look at the retracement. Well, in this case here, the B to C retracement was a 0.618 retracement. It was actually 63.36, so that's close enough for our work. Now, ordinarily, when you get a 0.618 retracement, increase the odds that you do just a one-to-one -one move. That's where we're at right now. However, if we take a look at price, it is on the left side. This is on a C to A to B equals CD pattern, the left side of that C to D leg. And that tells us that th this is a stronger move than the A to B leg. That alone suggests that this should do more than a one-to-one -one move. That next price target, 184.57. Don't use that to the T. Just know that that's likely where price is headed to. What else can I share with you? 
on the A to B equals CD pattern. The 1 to 1.618 would get us up to 189.40. I don't know that there's much about that. 189.40 would coincide with the top of the weekly profile out there. So those are the A to B equals CD. Uh, Hector, Patty, uh, congrats on uh, picking up on that. And again, however, no matter what I just shared with you, the next bearish reversal candle would confirm a sell the D point pattern. In this case here, a Gartley sell. So that's the IWM. Uh, John, any questions about that before we switch over to the Russell 2000 equity? future charts uh no uh no sir uh congrats indeed to uh hector uh hector and patty i uh i thought about that a couple of weeks ago and passed yeah of course uh woulda coulda shoulda is a uh, common uh, experience to most of us it is but it uh is. steve i uh i just posted in the tiger's den the two-hour bar chart of the russell 2000 futures yeah. Steve, I'd merely ask if you could pull up your multi-panel uh, charts for yep. that uh, contract and just buy, uh, bisect it and tell us what you're seeing with your tools. So sure. I thank you on that, and uh, I will listen to your answer off air if I could. Absolutely. And John, thanks for calling and thanks for kind of tying it all into Hector and Patty's question. So when we take a look at the two hour time frame chart, the one thing that we'll notice with regard to Stevie's tools is that this formed a TD nine count top and it did it at 4 a.m. this morning. That was on the bar following bar number nine. Now, that high is the most important high for us to be paying attention to. That high is 18, 19, 10. If price closes above that, which we don't have a close above that, I don't think we do. Let me just see here. That close was. 18, 18, 10. Nope, we're looking at 18, 19, 10 is my recollection. 18, 19, yeah. So we, that pattern is still in play out here. Now, we can see that this next bar is in process. This next bar closes in 23 minutes or thereabouts. If price closes above the high of the TD9 count top out here, again, 18, 19, 10, what the two-hour time frame chart would be communicating to us is that price should continue to move higher. Now, on a two-hour basis, can I identify where that next area is? Um, not easily. I'd have to turn on, which I can do. Let me see here. Let's see if I can do this real quickly here. Well, not that quickly, but as quickly as I can. Let me see if I can turn that on, and I can say, yeah, just give me all the lines. So we'll put in, oops, sorry, zero. This will give me infinity number of lines out there. So now the next resistance here, we want to try to understand on a two-hour chart, where did Where's the next breakdown level above the 18, 19, 10 level? It would be 18, 54, 30. So with this chart, the two-hour chart would tell us, John, is if that 18, 19, 10 level gets closed above at 12 noon, its next price target would become 18, 54, 30 out there. Okay, so John asked to take a look at each of the intraday time period charts. First, on a monthly basis, I've got a negated TD9 count bottom. So it may be that where price is gonna rally towards is that oscillator and change line. 1887 becomes a target. That's really what the weekly chart for the Russell 2000 is communicating to us. The Russell 2000 on a weekly basis confirmed a buy the D point pattern. And price right now is trading above its oscillator and change on its 1768.40. That says there could or should be more, at least from its perspective, more rally in it. 1887 being the target. We come back to this break, we'll look at the other intraday charts for the Russell 2000. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We popped up the 120-minute time frame chart on my black background uh, chart so that we could take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern. This is one of the patterns that John inside the Tigers and who had just called us about this instrument for this time frame is tracking. So we can see that prices attain that one-to-one -one price projection level up at the 1828-20 uh, area. What you're looking for here now at 12 noon, because this is a, a two-hour time frame chart, that's when this next bar completes, would be a bearish reversal candle. Now, at the moment, at 11.42 a.m., it's a bearish shooting star. I don't know what it's going to look like in another um, 18 minutes out there. But if it is a bearish shooting star, could even be a bearish engulfing candle, depending on what price does here, then that would confirm a top. If we don't get a bearish reversal candle, it's not a top. It would add to the idea of a rally up to the 1866 level. That would be the 1.272 expansion. Now, let's assume we get a bearish shooting star candle. What does this tell us? Well, first, it tells us that price should just simply pull back to test support. Now, you don't see it on this screen, but the oscillator and change line is at 1814, so, and which is not much below where we're at. So let's just forget the oscillator and change line for this discussion and say that there's two levels of key support on any move lower. There's really three levels. Those two levels are the top of the profile, 1810.31. The center, because this is a bearish structured profile, is the real key level. We can see that during that last two-hour bar, price got down there, tested and rejected it, traded and closed back above that uh, resistance level. That's a bullish signal. So 1804.45 is the next key area. If price only tests and rejects it, rejects it as it already has, that tells you that was just a counter trend move to the downside. Whereas a close below 1804 would then suggest a move to 1792. And below 1792, folks, you get all the way back to that breakout bar, which is 1701. That's that long ranging bar out there. So that's a two hour time frame chart. Now, let's go back to my other intraday chart. So if the two hour chart has an A to B equals CD, rest assured, the other intraday charts have that same pattern. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch back to the white background charts. Give me a moment just to do that. Got to get to the right spot. Change Stevie's window. Here we'll see the eight panel multi time frame chart. We'll start with the smallest time frame, and that's at 30 minute. 
Roads meant to mitigate her top. Right now, as we speak, prices is pulling back and testing the area where it should find support if it's only a counter trend move for this time frame. And that would be at the center of its bearish structured profile. And that level is 18.16.90. If price just tests, which is already done, and it rejects it, stays above that level, closes above that level, it was just a counter trend move to the downside. Now, it doesn't take away from the top. What it does is generates a neutral signal, whereas a close below the center of that profile brings 1804.70 or 1789.80 into play. That's the message of the 30-minute chart right now. Right now, we're going to go with a neutral signal until we see that 30-minute close. That's at 12 noon as well. On a hourly basis, there's a potential that this is going to form a Roachment indicator top. Its real key level of support now is tested. Uh, several hours ago, a couple different times, 1806. 1806 is a real key area of support for a 60-minute time frame. We've already beaten up the two-hour time frame chart. What do we have on a four-hour? Bar number eight of a TD9 count is going to complete at 2 p.m. That says this pattern could not form until or confirm until today's close, 5 p.m. out there. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, TD9 count that is in play, a close above the high of the TD9 count, this bar here will close at about 2 p.m. as well. So at 2 p.m., if price were to close above, this is the Russell 2000, 1824.80. That pattern is negated and tells about a strong upward momentum move out there. By the way, that strong upward momentum move from the daily standpoint, we had take a look at A to B equals CD patterns out here. From a TD9 count breakdown resistance level, that number would be 1890, 1892.70 out there. So that's the Russell 2000. That was for John inside the Tiger's Den and for Hector, 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 Hector and Patty out there. Let's go to our next request. Let me actually close out these charts here just to free up some dialogue. Uh, let's take a look at NVIDIA. Uh, so we'll go take a look at NVIDIA. We had talked about that just briefly when we were doing the review of the top-weighted stocks inside the NDX 100. That's not NVIDIA. Where did Stevie put it? Must have put it. Oh, I didn't put it. Where did I put it? Did I put it there? I did not. Oh, you know what I did? I probably drew right over it when we went to take a look at the IWM, or who knows what I did. But let's just take a look at NVIDIA. Let me make sure that I'm on the right screen. I am. That's a good thing. So with regard to NVIDIA, we talked about how it did complete a TD9 count top yesterday. And only a close above that high would negate that signal. Again, that high is 498.34. What should take place is price should pull back to test support. In the case of NVIDIA, there's no new profiles out here. So support is going to be 466 and change out there. On a weekly basis, prices were trading into resistance. That's a resistance from this bearish shooting star that confirmed a Roachman to indicator top the week of August 25th. That resistance level 502.66, TD9 count top on the uh, monthly chart and a consolidation with inside profile 502.66 is also its key level of resistance out there. So 502.66 would be to the upside. If you break above that, close above that, you're headed higher. Otherwise, NVIDIA should pull back. If we take a look at a I've got a 65-minute chart out here, one of the multi-time frame charts that we use for instruments that trade for 390 minutes. This has a Rhodesmentum indicator uh, top out here, and support would be down at the uh, 485.06 level. Let's change this to a 30-minute, just see what shows up on the 30-minute time frame. And the 30-minute time frame, also Rhodesmentum indicator top, a new wide profile out there. So a key level of support for NVIDIA, John, is going to be at 484.70. 487.94. Don't worry, I'll eventually get it. A close below that would suggest a further pullback with 480.99 being the price target. So TD9 count top inside of NVIDIA. Watch that 30-minute time frame chart for your next clue out there. John, I hope that helps you out. We had a couple requests, SNP and somebody else inside the Tigers and wanted to take a look at natural gas. So did I... I don't think I did, I think. I think with regard to natural gas... It's right here. This is the only charts that I've got. So the question was, up or down for the next week? That's a great question. Uh, the answer to that is going to be both up and down. Both up and down, Stevie. That seems like an easy way to get out of it. No, it's the actual answer as we speak right now. The reason being, you've got a Roachman, you've got a buy the D point pattern that is formed inside of the daily time frame for the Russell 2000. It did that when it generated this three bar morning star pattern out there. So the real level of support is not the bottom of its profile. Bull is structured at 304, but it's really going to be the bottom of that pattern. And that's at 2.989. If price goes below that, we're headed lower. 
On the daily time frame, bullish structured profile, price should target the top of the profile, 3.283. And 3.283, the actual high so far today, 3.275. So what we have here is a consolidation. And not until the consolidation gets broken, S&P or whomever asked about it as well. My apology, I, don't, I didn't write it down. I should have, but I didn't. Until we break above resistance, 328 out there, it's a consolidation with inside profile. So that's why I say both up and down, especially since we're up towards the top of that profile. Now, a close above it, we get a whole different thing. What's that whole different thing? The whole different thing would tell us that as long as we can get back inside the weekly profile, that requires a close on Friday above 3.285. So now that becomes another key area. If price can close above that, then that would suggest we should see a move up to 3.422 out there. So that's how you're going to have to monitor it. I'll see if I've got anything on a 30-minute time frame chart. When we look at the 30-minute time frame chart for natural gas, we do not see a top. We do see an A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, that's not been completed. You see price trade above a prior breakdown level. The key area here on a 30-minute basis, that price needs to close above is 3.264. You do that, and price should continue to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors.
Yeah. So still all the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside. Dow's up 96, S&P 10, Nasdaq 115, Russell's up 15, semis are up 26 points. We're taking like a ticker symbol, XPEV. The question is, is this worth owning? Well, I wouldn't buy it necessarily today. You've got nice volume in it. You actually have about 10 million shares right now. This is traded today. 10 million shares versus the swing point that is testing that only had 9.5. So it's pushing into it. But price has found resistance at where it broke down from. That was at 1768. If price can close above that, specifically if it can close above the high from November 6th, that high is 1791, this would trigger an A to B equals CD to the upside. So resistance is held. I wouldn't suggest getting into the position just yet. Let's go take a look at our next request. This is for Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. Wants to look at CFLT. Now, CFLT, the only bottom signal that I have out here, I'd really have to study it, is possibly a wave number seven. I don't want to worry about that right now. What we do know is yesterday, this instrument traded above, closed above the top of its daily profile, 1907. You're trading above yesterday's high. That says that CFLT is likely to continue to move higher. Now, there's no bottom pattern on the weekly. There's no bottom pattern yet on the monthly time frame, and it's questionable whether there's even a bottoming pattern on the daily time frame as well. But you are above profile. What's the next price target to the upside? I'd have to say it'd be 2201 as your next level of resistance that would be the bottom of its monthly profile out there so there's your next resistance point the last uh, question was if i could go back and take a look at the s p 500 um in, uh, we talked about yesterday with uh, michael in niagara falls this was joyce asked if i could review that joyce i apologize i only got about a few seconds left here but let me change over to that screen in essence here's the s p 500 i did go ahead and add in the s p in canadian dollars out there that is on the lower where is it Canadian dollars is right here, right dead center. But what you want to take a look at, the important point is understand how instruments, especially indices, are trading in all the major currencies out here. And here I've got a total of, what, eight different currencies, the euro, the yen, the pound, all the, all the currencies that make up the U.S. dollar index, as well as the Australian dollar and the Chinese yuan out there. What we can say is right now we've got broad participation in this rally kind of across the globe. What I mean by that, we're at new highs in the yen. We're in the pound. We're up at the old high out there. So folks, have a, a wonderful Wednesday. I'll see you tomorrow. I Hopefully, I've got a dentist appointment. Hopefully, I'm here tomorrow on Thursday. Take care.